and welcome back for part two of Tobruk on the Allied side on yet another bonus episode of Let's Play Battlefield 1942. And the Allies have been doing a good job in this round so far, preventing the Germans from getting an early foothold, holding that ticket bleed in as much as we could. Uh, we still got quite a few tanks out there, so at least we're not wasting them and allowing them to be captured. I'd really like to get this second line German flag here uh, back on our side because that of course is the birthplace of the tank that I'm currently using and probably uh, I'll continue to be using this flag to get my tank. Maybe some. It'd be nice to capture that German tank there that's smoking but at the moment, uh, I've got a lot of work to do. I can't really switch out my tanks. Really want to get both of these second flags, second line flags here, uh, turned over. In fact, man, well, there's a German sniper in there. Talk about a wasted class. I mean, if you're German and you're a sniper on this map, it's probably because you've been camped in your main base and you've got nothing better to do. But really, Spawning here as a sniper on the German side makes almost zero sense. Everyone's going to be running around in every direction. Not too many allied snipers either. So not much prey for the sniper. And I'm going to head back to this back base simply because there's no one else doing so at the moment. No defenders anywhere in sight. So that leads it to me. I really want to prevent this from uh, getting defended definitely don't want them to start making use of the light tank and the heavy tank that's spawned in here. The artillery I could really care less about. It's also useful to retake this flag as quickly as possible just to let the rest of the people on your team know that... The, where did that guy even come from? I didn't see him earlier. And there's another guy. I don't think they were spawning in, but... Uh, Maybe it was just after I turned away. Alright, I think uh, Friendly's going to go in that heavy tank now. But uh, anyways, it's important to retake that flag as quickly as possible to send a message to your team that they don't all need to head over there. Because otherwise, you'll get virtually all the British on your team going to the back base, which leaves everything else undefended. And, uh then you'll be stuck in your back base. And you definitely don't want to be stuck with your back base as the only flag you've got left because it has such a large capture radius, which means it's very difficult for the enemy to neutralize it. And of course, once your only flag has been neutralized, you've got no more spawn points. So that's one of the weird paradoxes about the game is that if you've only got one flag left, sometimes it's a good idea for, for that flag to be a, a small one. Simply because uh, you're guaranteed to be able to at least hold on to that small capture radius and uh, continue to spawn in. As one might expect, a lot of infantry uh, were probably planning on heading from this flag which they just had to go down to the other second line flag. But the allies really have a good response response time so far. Every time the Germans uh, seem to get a foothold, we really get a quick counterattack on them. Now, uh, time, to <laughs> time to die is just... Uh, told me that I'm on notice now, that uh, my days are numbered. I thought I'd killed him more times than usual. But uh, I guess that's a good opportunity to talk about suicide attacks in Battlefield 1942 more generally. If you really want to take someone out and you don't care about strategy or your team or your own life or anything, you usually should be able to do it. Now maybe this map isn't the easiest to do that on. But if you've got an airplane, for example, you really want to take someone out, you can just kamikaze your airplane into the enemy tank, for instance. Just fly directly into it. If you've got a jeep, you can kamikaze someone with that. Um, maybe load it up with some explosives. If you've got 
uh, a short distance between you and a hostile tank and you don't care about your life, just charge them and throw uh, a landmine right on top of the tank. And you can even, you really can kamikaze with tanks too. Just charge your tank and just bash it directly into the enemy tank. And uh, you may get killed, but you'll likely take a lot of energy off of the hostile as well. Okay, now I'm really low on health here, so I can only survive with a, a distraction, I guess, and there really wasn't one available. I noticed an empty tank icon on the map, so I'm going to switch over to this flag. If you ever see any empty tanks and you're on the allied side, now I'm going to have to claim this one. I'm just going to continue to spawn in here whenever I die. Allies, we've narrowed the gap, I guess. It's 30 tickets. I'd really like to have a lead, though, if you're on the allied side, because time is not, time is not on your side because the possibility of being capped out. And at this stage in the game, it's difficult for us to re-inflict ticket bleed. Although I have to say again, the Germans with only gray flags over here. So we're really doing a good job of preventing them to, from shoring up a, a reliable spawn point that they can launch out from. Although I do have to give the Germans some credit because they are turning a lot of flags gray, just unpredictably. And turning the British base gray a lot. More frequently, you'll just see the frontline flags turning off and on between gray and British. But here, the Germans have at least managed to change up their game and go after a lot of different flags. They just haven't been able to hold on to them. And I guess I was wrong about re-inflicting ticket bleed. Look at this, once again. And if we're lucky, we may even be able to hold this off as if it were uh, a beginning phase of the game. Because it's not like I'm seeing a whole bunch of swarms of infantry and, and enemy tanks all behind our lines. So they're probably all going to have to start once again, square one at their main base. And uh, if that happens, we can all, all the allies can just circle around the front line once again. Always nice to get a double kill when you kill a tank. Not too, not too common though, because people tend to jump out of a damaged tank if they're in the mounted machine gun position. Okay, I just got hit from somewhere. Yeah, probably that guy got in a, a lucky shot on the side of my tank. Maybe got really lucky with an assist from. I think a uh, friendly engineer's landmine there. And a smoking tiger tank over there. Hopefully someone... Looks like someone may be stealing that on our side, which would be very useful. Or not. I guess there's a, just an infantry right near the tank. And again, that would be a great opportunity to repair and steal a tank, but with that fly gray and with my tank damaged, I really just didn't have the security to do that. More important to camp in this flag over here. Really, when it comes to tank stealing, it's almost always got to be done by someone who's just on foot. You don't want to really swap, swap out tanks unless your tank's really damaged or something and uh, you think it's going to be blown up anyway. But if you're an engineer you spawned in and you don't have a tank, always be on the lookout for damaged tanks that you can claim as your own. And for the umpteenth time here, we're re-inflicting ticket bleed. where that was coming from, once again.
In this position, it's often useful to be the one guy who checks the radar and uh, defend the flag that no one else is, just to spread your forces around. Stay tuned for part three.